All right, capturing. Um, to bring the images into Photoshop, can I just drag and drop them in? Yeah, we have to go to File, which which menu? Uh, scripts. scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. And you have to specifically browse for where you have placed these files. So this is why it's important to keep track of where everything goes on your hard drive and what folder you save stuff in. And I had labeled these in this fashion. I forgot to add extensions to a couple of them, but hopefully Photoshop will read it. Should be able to. Oh, it is having trouble, so I'm going to have to rename these. Um, SAO image doesn't automatically assign extensions to file names. So Photoshop likes to know, at least on Windows, what kind of extension your file name has. So I am loading, yeah. TIFF is the one we are using. So I have my three images here ready to load in. I could check automatically align the source images if they were not, if I knew they weren't aligned. The ones I picked, I'm pretty sure they are aligned properly, but if they're not, I can make a couple tweaks to make sure they are. Um, and you don't convert it to a smart object, just keep it as a regular uh, stack of layers. And so there are the individual images loading up. Essentially what happens is it will load them all up in different tabs in Photoshop first and then port them all to a stack of layers. Um, yeah. If you want to add another image after, is there a way to add it? Just Easily. You can go down to the layer menu in the bottom right and add a new layer and bring it in there. Yeah. So before I'm going to make this zoom in so that it's fit on, fitting on the screen. Um, what blend mode do I have to set all the layers to? Uh, screen. Yeah. So I need to select all layers and there's I can select from the menu or I can select them all here and then I turn each layer into screen and so now I can turn them all off individually and I can look at them individually or all together and that allows me to colorize each one so I'm going to start from the bottom so again we select all of the layers so you can click one press shift and press the last one it selects them all and then there's a little blend mode menu above it. In blending layers, this is how you can, I mean, this is what Photoshop is really built around, this idea of layers, taking a layer of something, taking a layer of something else. If you want to change the tint of an image, you can put a layer of a solid color and blend it with another layer below. So it's this blend mode that gives Photoshop a lot of its power. So screen is what we're using. The Assumption here, there, what this is mimicking is if I had three different projectors projecting each image on the same surface and the lights blending together. So this is what's adding them together. I'm going to turn off the top two. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to click on the bottom layer and I'm going to go up to add an adjustment. The adjustment that I want to add, what kind of adjustment will it be? Yeah, a hue and saturation. And I get this hue and saturation menu that comes in. Mo very important for this process here, the first button at the bottom of the hue and saturation, this adjustment affects all layers below. No, I don't want it to affect all layers below it. I only want it to affect the single layer below it. So if you press that, what happens is it creates what's called a clipping mask, meaning it's only going to affect the layer that's directly below it. Um, and that's what you want because you only want to add a color to each individual layer. We have to make sure colorize is checked. And then what we do with the coloring saturation, we bring it up to 100%. And to make sure that our final composite isn't too washed out, I found it's nice to drop the lightness by about 25%. You can go back and change this. Now this layer was the 142 nanometer color. Um, what color would that be? <laughs> 142 nanometers infrared I got to get my infrared crayon I don't have an infrared crayon here um, I'm going to pick something maybe here in the red to start but I I'm probably going to go back and change it I also say again 
That's that's where choice matters. And so I'll we'll get all these colored, and then I will show you how different colors can change how they blend together. So uh, I'm going to exit this now, and then I'm going to just turn off this bottom layer here, and I'm going to do the next one up. For 10 nanometers, what color would that be? Kind of ooh, 410. Our visual range is 400 to 750. So it's going to be, it's going to look like a deep blue. Okay. So if this is going to be a deep, deep blue, again, I have to make sure it's a clipped or add the clipping mask. Whoop, there we go. Colorize 100% saturation and minus 25% of the lightness. I'm going to make this, yeah, I'm going to give it a good deep blue. Just, I'm going to start out with maybe what the colors would actually look like within reason. I don't know what infrared would look like. Um, and then I'll go back and change it later. And then the last one, this 658 nanometer narrow. Add the clipping mask. Colorize. So you see how a lot of this is just kind of doing the same stuff over and over. And every time you do it, it just reinforces like, okay, this is the method. This is the method. But then you start to, as you go through a bunch of times, you start to notice other stuff. So 658 nanometers. What part of the spectrum is that in? Red, yeah. I'm going to start with red. I'm going to give it some red. Okay. And now I'm going to close this. And let's say I turn on all these layers, that's going to be pink because that's blue and red. That looks very washed out. So what I'm going to do, first thing is I'm going to go back to this hue and saturation. And I will, on a Mac, you control click. On a PC, you just right click. I'm actually going to change this one to green. I don't have any green in my image. Notice how changing it to green actually makes it seem more like a full color image. Everything is still very washed out. So this is this is the basic idea. What I could do on I can click on the very top layer and I could do one thing would be a levels adjustment for everything and I would change where my light and dark happen to be. So I do the same thing I did in SAO image, but just overall for the image. And that will help me bring some more tone into the image. Another thing I could do instead of it that way, um, I'm going to leave that there because I could turn off the adjustment. That's, the, again, the beauty of layers. I can add a brightness and contrast. Just the basic, it's overall too bright. Let's add some more contrast into this um, or less, depending on. And that's, again, globally changing everything in the image. So maybe that, eh, starting to lose it, but another another thing I could look at is I want to turn off everything with the very bottom layer. And what I could do for the bottom layer is I could add a levels that is just for the bottom. So I'm going to add a clipping mask to this thing and I am going to adjust just this bottom layer's levels to see if this would give me some more definition. And indeed, I am starting to get more definition out of this for adjusting just this layer. So you can go back and adjust each layer individually. So maybe like two of your images um, are great, but one of them is super washed out. Just edit that one layer and you can add a levels um, uh, adjustment or a brightness and contrast for that single one and then that will help you sort of tone back just one part of the image so the idea there then hopefully when you start adding everything back into it it appears more like a, an image that we would expect to see this isn't exactly um, done yet but this gives you the introduction for these tools so I'm going to stop